that up over here. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, what I really wanted to do today, but it doesn't look like um, many of you have anything to share. Um, so this is going to be a very, very short uh, webinar today um, for a couple of reasons. I had hoped that you guys would have some things to share um, on your movie poster. I don't expect it to be completed, but even if it's a simple work in progress, um, I wanted to be able to see how you were doing with it and to give you feedback. So is there anyone here? Uh, hold on here. Let's see. Um, chat. Yes, um, yeah, this week's syllabi states that Wednesday's webinar is canceled. That's correct. Um, because I have some medical things that I have to take care of. So um, we have today and then I won't see you until next week. So what I was hoping to do today is, you know, thinking that you were in the midst of working on your poster assignment that I could see some work in progress. But if there isn't anything that I will get start, get you started with um, the next lesson, but I don't, I won't complete it. Um, we're going to um, instead we'll I just it'll take 10 minutes maybe and that's it and we'll have a very short session today. Okay. No, no comments. No. Okay. So what you are seeing on the screen right now is um, lesson 10, which is taking uh, a photograph and turning it into a digital painting. Okay. So this is the final um, outcome of what they have and they've already collapsed it, but you can work on different layers. And that's what I really recommend that you do. Here is the start file right here. And it's a photograph, you know, of a nice kind of uh, bucolic landscape. It's a nice, they look like they're um, native California oaks, but I couldn't be certain about that. I don't know. And it looks like they doctored this a little bit. I don't know that it's an original photograph but you could turn one. And it's really a, a pretty useful tool. I, they start you off, you know, with a simple uh, landscape and they provide the brushes for you, which is really very nice. And you can create your own custom brushes, but the ones that they've provided for you are a great way to get started. So I'm going to come down here. And there's a couple of other things that they have for us to work on too. Just to, here, we'll, we'll do these next week, the palettes. So this is the start palette. And the end palette is, looks like so. Because when you're working in um, um, our, here, our paint mix, mixer brush tool, that you can actually mix uh, colors on your digital canvas here. So we'll, we'll work on this part next week, but I wanna just simply introduce this to you. So let's look at the end result at the moment, okay? So to work digitally and to you know, convert a photograph into a digital painting, um, a couple of things that you need to do. Num number one, they have some built-in brushes, but um, you probably want to download the brushes that they provided because they provide useful colors and um, textures. And that's the whole thing, adding texture to a, a digital photograph. So the first thing that I would recommend that you do is in the upper right-hand corner is that under the workspace that you select painting. Now, by default, we've been using essentials, okay? And that's what it, this is what the essential desktop looks like. But if we switch to a painting, okay, a painting one, it looks very similar, but you're gonna see that we have um, 
at least for the finished one, we have um, some colors that are built in here. But more importantly, we have the brushes down below. And then what you're going to use over to the left, it's just below the spot healing brush. So you're going to click here. And what we want is the mixer brush tool. And you'll notice at the top along here, um, you're going to have a variety of um, selections for you. And the important ones are right here. Really, really important. Now, to really properly work on um, the, uh, the image, to turn it into a digital painting. And I'm going to stop sharing for a moment so you can see me. Is that, <clears throat> and this isn't required for the class, but just to let, you know, give you a heads up, is that you really should have a Wacom tablet like this. Okay. Everybody see that okay? And the Wacom tablet works with a stylus like this, a digital stylus. Now, some of you who are working on iPads would um, have access to something very similar, especially if you're working on an iPad Pro. But on many of the, um, the current ones that um, you, have, you can work with a, a, a modified stylus. So the reason that the stylus works so well, as opposed to a mouse, that a mouse is kind of like painting or drawing with a, um, a bar of soap, you know, a big clunky kind of thing. And the stylus, although you still need to get acclimated, excuse me, to using it, it functions in a, in a variety of manners. That the harder you press, the more paint it will release, release the broader the brush or broad, broader the, the image that you're, that you're um, uh, drawing or painting with. And that it will work in a variety, depending on the brush that you're working with, it will work in a variety of angles, as well as when you rotate the brush in your hand, just as if it were in a, you know, you're working with a real brush. Okay, so in the meantime, we're working with a mouse. So since most of you are working with a mouse, um, that's what I'm going to work with. Okay. So let me go ahead and let me um, share the screen again. So that we go back here. And I hope everybody can see this. Okay. Okay. So um, after you have switched from essentials mode um, to painting mode and that you have uh, you're working with a mixer brush then the next thing that you want to do and I already have mine loaded here but where you will load these brushes okay and you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of them the ones that we have here are, are CLB landscape brushes so that when you download um, the lesson file we're going to import these so to do that, we're going to go ahead here over in the brush panel, and we're going to click on the little plus sign right here. And we, what we want to do is we don't want to create a new brush. What am I doing here? I want to load brushes. So I'm going to come up under the, um, the folder here. Let me do this. Brushes. Let me click from up here and see. I want to import brushes, my bad. If you want to create your own custom brush, you do, you click on the little plus sign. But instead, I want to import the brushes. And I've already done that, but I'll show you where you go. So again, that's in this little flyout window up here in the upper right hand corner, just above um, the brush panel. And what you want to do is select import brushes. And then you're going to go to, it will bring this back up here. I'm going to go to my desktop because this is where I save the, um, the lessons from for this semester. So I'm going to go to, here's my Photoshop CC 2020. And let's go to lesson 10. And you're going to see that this is a CIB landscape brushes AVR. So this is a brush library. So you just simply double click on that and load them. And that's it. And then you're done. Now, you're, now they're imported. Okay. Well, I already have mine imported. 
So there we have that. So we have all these brushes here. We have a cloud brush. We have a round fan brush. We have they very they've been very specific. Um, green grass highlight brush, foreground tree brush, um, all of these here, all the way up to the little individual hairs of or hairs, individual um, grasses grass that we have here, the individual little pieces of grass. So um, the way I prefer to work. Um, is I'll switch to the landscape start file so we can see this. Again, is to don't resize any of this, but to Command J to make a copy of it. Let's make sure that I have that. Command J, and I've made a copy of it. So I can always go back to the original. Another thing that I can do too is that there is a brush history tool here. And if you don't change any of the properties of your brush, you can always do that. So here's the brush history. So what I can do is let's start by working with the sky. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here. And if I wanted to, I could add some clouds. And you can see what they've done here. They have blue for the clouds. And what we have up here, it says load the brush after each stroke. And it says Clear, clean the brush after every stroke. So you're basically working with a dry, dry brush when you do that. Now, if I switch to white and I start to draw, notice that I'm working with, you know, white kind of fluffy clouds as I drag across the screen here. Now, what I can also do with this too, to make it a little bit more interesting, because it's my feeling that you can do much more with this if you make it look anything but like a photograph. Um, I think if you work with this and make it look more impressionistic, you're going to be better off. So one of the things that I would do is I would switch, for example, all the way up here to the round fan brush, for example. And then I would come up here and instead of wet, we're going to go, you know, I do want to, uh, I want to clean this. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the brush. Okay. And I'm going to come down here and I want to make sure that this, let's see, load the brush after each, each stroke. Yes. And I want to, no, I don't. And I don't want to clean the brush after every stroke either. And so now what I can do is when I stretch, when I scratch across this watch, notice that it's working as a dry, dry brush. And it, depending on the direction that I go, I'm, you know, dragging and adding, you know, the texture as if this photograph was made of um, wet oils. And now you can come back in here and you can work freely. Now, if you don't like what you're doing, we can always com use Command Z to undo some of these steps. Another way to work too is to work with the history brush and I can do that and as I as I draw over just part of it. If I don't like, you know, you know, I didn't like this, but I do like what's going on up here. Then I can work with that and so that brings me back to the original photograph, which is kind of cool or a variation thereof. So that's fundamentally how this works. As I said, this is going to be a very short lesson that, you know, we have the brown grass here. So I can come in here and I can work on this and let's work on some brown grass up here and, you know, make it a little bit more uh, bold, I guess the right word is, and we can work on the brown grass down here. And it's really kind of a loosey goosey uh, approach. Um, I know that some people try to do more photorealistic interpretations. Um, I'm less impressed with those than the ones that are more expressionistic, hint, hint. Because after the movie poster is completed, um, we're going to do the next assignment will be to do a digital painting. And it will be based again off of this lesson that we're working on right now. And so you can see I'm kind of decimating this. And if I wanted to, I could work on a brand new layer as well. 
And now when I do that, notice what it does. It doesn't sample all the layers by default. It's just picking that orange color that they use for us. Now, if you like that, you can go ahead and do that, but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this little button right here where it says sample all layers. Now I can come back in here and even though, and this is really the preferred way to work because you'll notice that as I move this around here, if I turn this off, okay, notice that those brush strokes disappear because I'm working on a, on a blank layer. But you can see that by working on this layer, it brings me back to my original, but it's not transparent. I'm just turning the whole thing off. So what I could do is I could work on multiple layers um, to get the desired effects. And if there's a layer I don't like, just delete the whole thing. And that would be my preferred way of working is to work on multiple layers. And then, you know, decide for yourself how many you need. And then I can come back up here, for example, or down here, I should say, and then I can come back here with the little blades of grass and I can, you know, pick in here. And just keep drawing, you know, but you're going to have to do it in layers. So maybe I want the blades of grass even on a, another layer on top of this one, and I can start by labeling them. Likewise, you know, like I say, you can also take any number of these brushes, if, you know, whichever ones that you really like. Like, let's take this one here, this green highlighted one, one that has a lot of texture in it. And again, I can turn off, and I can turn it into a dry brush here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean the brush. And now I can come up here and let me clean it again. Let's go ahead and clean the brush. And make sure that this is, let's undo that. Now let's try, I want to go to white here. Let's see if I can. not Oh, I want to make sure that I am sampling. Yeah, see, I forgot to look. Um, I want to make sure that I'm sampling through all the layers. And now when I click, okay, notice that it's, you know, streaking that white color that I have. And also um, I want to make sure that it is taking from the initial image in the background. And I'm really grunging it up a bit. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, we'll determine how grungy, you know, this is. Now, if you want to try a couple of other effects, I can turn these back on. And you can see that this one here, what it will do is it will load the brush after each so if I do that, now watch what it's doing, okay? And if I turn the other one on, it's going to clean the brush afterwards. So let's turn that one off and turn this one on and see the different effect that we get, okay? You can see that it's actually, you get cut more of a smearing effect. You really can't go wrong with this. You can't do anything wrong. You can always, if you're working on uh, a new layer, you can always delete it or turn it off and work on another blank layer. But again, the goal is to get something a bit more, um, from my perspective, a bit more uh, painterly. I mean, that's the whole goal. If you're going to make it look like a photograph, then just use a photograph and leave it as is. But again, I can come down here with a grass, for example, and I can take this and I can, using the current features that I have, I can blur those out a little bit as well. And we can go back and we can work on the tree and you can start with the brushes that they have provided. And then if you want, you can use any of the other brushes, but you're gonna have to work with by cleaning the brush and deciding whether you wanna load it after every stroke or you want it to um, clean it after every stroke to get the dry brush effect. But right now it is set to wet. So it's like working in wet oils. Okay. So again, as I'm moving across here, and that really, I think, works very nicely. Um, probably in the next week, um, there is also uh, a video from lynda.com that I will show you. Um, and because it is copyrighted, I won't be able to put it on 
uh, YouTube, but I will put it on our uh, um, our Canvas website, so you can kind of get a feel for that. And it's really very good. Where um, a guy, you know, does pretty much what we're doing, but he works with a still life. And so when you guys, when your project is done with a movie poster and you decide to um, work on a digital painting, you're going to have your choice of doing a landscape, um, a still life, a portrait, whatever you feel comfortable with. And you're going to have plenty of time to experiment. Okay, so you can see already, I mean, I'm kind of talking and just kind of moving the brush around as I'm working here and making some decent headway. Okay. But again, you want to, the goal is to really decimate all of the, the photographic properties that you have down here when you're done. Okay. Now, what I also want to do is I want to show you some samples of what can be done. So what I've done is I did a simple Google search and I'm hopeful everybody can find this. And this is just digital Photoshop paintings. And some of them look, if I, if I look in here, you know, this one looks pretty close to the original. And that I don't, I'm not too keen on. But if you look at some of the others, let's look at some of the others for a closer look. Let me close this. And let's find something else that looks a little bit more painterly. That is kind of going in the direction that I think is worthwhile. I had some here a moment ago. And why don't I see them? Really, really, you know, really nice. So, I mean, they're all nice, but you know, it, it'll be up to you what kind of image you want to work with. My recommendation is maybe you pick one of your own, that you take a photograph yourself with your cell phone and work with it. Oh, come on, come on. I want, I had it here a moment ago. Um, nice digital. Um, but as I was saying, depending on the speed of your computer, will determine if, how much lag time there is when you're working with the brushes. So it can look, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, fairly abstract. Okay, and this take gives you a, a step by step approach, you know, and here's a painterly approach to um, lips, and this would be legitimate. And the e example that we have, and I only have one example, unfortunately. But if we go back to um, my website, so let's go back to it. And we go to um, Kirk's classes. And we scroll up here. And we come back in here. Let's go. This is the one what I wanted you guys to see, which is really very nice. Again, it's clearly based on a photograph, but it has a real illustrative quality to it so that most of the detail or the photographic properties have been decimated and a lot of blurring is involved, but you know, and I don't know how much of the, the original image is there and how much of it has been eradicated but it would make for a very nice um, uh, illustration that could go in a, uh, in a magazine or that sort of thing. So that's the direction that I think um, everybody should be headed right now for the, when you work on the digital paintings. So that's what I have so far. Let's go back here and let's look at some others. Let's um, go back. and find something that's a little bit more painterly. Not that, but some others that are very nice. And I'm running out. Why didn't I, I had, this is kind of cool. Okay. Okay, so if you look at the, and this is sort of what we're doing in the uh, 
in the lesson itself is where we're leaving some detail to make it look somewhat, you know, representational, realistic. But then when you go around the outer perimeter, you're working with really, really loose abstract brush strokes. And that combination has a really nice feel, very um, um, comfortable feel. And you can see what the original one looked like here. Okay. And there's lots of online tutorials um, for this, but really the lesson that we have in the book is pretty darn good. Um, photograph of your dog, you know, I'd probably do mine, bagel, and that would be a good one to do. You know, again, very similar approach. Um, really grunging it up, making it look more painterly, but clearly um, based on a photograph, but it really doesn't look anything like a photograph when you're done. Okay. So unless you guys have something to share, um, that's pretty much it for today. That is all she wrote. Um, and I will do more with this next week. Uh, we're going to watch videos on the process of a digital painting. I will do more myself on this and we'll do the little palette and that sort of thing. But I was hoping that I would be able to see more of what you guys were doing today. So I repeat again, is there anyone here who has something that they would like to share um, on their, their movie poster? And I, again, I don't expect it to be completed. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you guys will have, let's see, I'm, I'm looking at the roll sheet while we're doing this. Uh, Giovanni is here. Um, and Delvin is here. That, um, yeah, that I can look at them before you're done so that I can give you some feedback. And it's not to rag on you, it's to um, make sure that, you know, you're going in a good direction because you aren't expected to have any experience in design. You're not expected, you know, to take the class, you're not expected to have any experience with type and that sort of thing or color theory or whatever. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, you guys have some feedback before you turn in your final project. No, nobody, not one, not one of you. Okie doke then, well, then that's all there is for today. Um, we don't have any more. I mean, there's more that I can do, but we're, we're really on top of the lessons. We're running at midterm and we're already on lesson 10 and we're only going up to lesson 12. So later on, when we start working on retouching and that sort of thing, um, there's going to be a lot of videos that we're going to watch on YouTube, um, not YouTube, but on lynda.com um, that cover that. Some pretty sophisticated ways of retouching photographs that are um, really, really um, useful. Okay. Because um, that that's what Photoshop was originally designed to do, was to, to retouch photographs. And it put retouchers, the, the traditional retouchers who were really fine painters, um, they put them out of business unless they um, were able to adapt and switch to the digital version of, of what they did. And back in the day when I was art directing and designing um, um, and illustrating that if I had to hire a professional retoucher, I did retouching myself, but for the high end stuff, if I hi had to hire somebody, somebody who was really, really good. This is like back in 1982 or so. Um, they were making $100 an hour. Now, $100 an hour is a lot of money today. So imagine what it was like over 30 years ago. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, they were really, really doing quite well. But Photoshop put an end to all of that. So that's where we're going to end up 
a semester with them retouching and restoring photographs. But this is another really useful tool. Um, you turn it into, you know, take a, a photograph. Um, you can work from scratch, but um, or work from an existing drawing that you have and build upon that. Um, but it's really much easier um, if you work from a photograph because then you don't have to worry about composition. You don't have to worry about color. You don't have to worry about you know, your drawing skills because you're pulling it up from the photograph itself. And you just have to worry about the style of it, you know, developing you know, quality of the brush and that sort of thing. And you can work on, as I said, multiple layers add elements to it that aren't in the photograph. You can do all sorts of things to, to bring your, your image to life. Okay, so if there aren't any comments, if there aren't any, um, if there isn't anything else for us today, then we're going, I'm gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna pause the, the recording and that will be it for today. And again, as a reminder, this Wednesday, we will not be meeting on Tuesday night. I will send you an email to remind you that um, I will be canceling uh, the, uh, the webinar because I have some uh, medical things to attend to. Um, to give you an idea of some of the things that I work on myself, I work a lot in 3D modeling. I'm kind of uh, dragging things out here. But this is a new website, or it's not a new website, but I'm revising the website. Um, this digital gallery was developed entirely um, in Lightwave. So, you know, you can see that I have, you know, my digital art in here. Um, it's actually artwork that I originally created, but I put it in a digital gallery with the lighting and the wooden floors and everything. So this is this is these are one this is one of the projects that I've been working on for quite a while now. Try to get the lighting just right. <clears throat> and it's close. Um, close enough to get started with it. So this is what I have to show you about kind of the stuff that I do these days. Now that I'm all cooped up in my studio and my place here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back. And again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that's it for now. You guys are free to leave. I'll stop the recording and I will see you next Monday and we'll continue with the digital painting. But remember, um, you have all this week to work on your, your poster and you have next week to work as well, but it will be due at the end of the week. And then the following week, we will have a critique of the, of the poster. Okay. Okie doke. So bye-bye.